Happy New Year. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Okay, this guy's a little bit late to the party, or, oh, Chinese New Year. Today I want to talk about the Iroquois calendar, as well as the Iroquois New Year, and a little bit about time in general. So it's currently the first day of the New Year, according to the Iroquois belief. The New Year falls according to the, the lunar calendar, so. The first new moon after midwinter, first day of the New Year. Now, there are still a number of people down on Six Nations who observe the Iroquois New Year. Traditionalists, mainly, but also a fair portion of non-traditionalists will go along every now and again because it's a time to get in touch with your culture, it's a time to stay in touch with your community, and it's a generally good time. I'm not going to talk too much about it because <coughs> I'm not a traditionalist and this knowledge belongs to them. It's not mine to distribute. There are Thanksgiving prayers, give thanks for all that happened in the new year, and you ask forgiveness for your misdeeds. We've all done something we're not proud of in the last year. Thus, you can start with a clean slate. Now, there's, after that, there's games and dance and food, lots of food. Now, the, the year was divided according to the, the lunar calendar. There are 13 new moons in a year, so there are 13 months in a year. Each of these months is divided up into about 28 days. Now, I say about because the moon doesn't care about our... It's naive of us to impose rules upon the moon. Right? 365 and a quarter does not divide evenly into groups of 28. Some months are 29 days, some months are 27 days. You go outside, you look at the moon, and you say, okay, we're going to have one more day this month. Now, I got something here, it's a, a turtle shell. Now, these were used as sort of a, a simple calendar. If you look at the scales on the turtle's back, all the larger ones in the center count up to 13. At least they do in most turtles. 13 scales, 13 months. So what you do is you take a little bit, little daub of clay. As the months pass, you go over and you just mark up the scales. Then when the new year comes, you get a bit of water and you just wash it all off. And you're good to go for the next year. I remember seeing in a museum once where all of the scales were painted with a little symbol. Right? A little symbol to signify the, the name of the month. Um, I don't know whether this was a, a modern art project or actual historical artifact, but I think that's an interesting idea. Um, certainly plausible. Now, each of the months were named for some significant event that happens in them. Now, these names varied by community. So, what I'm familiar with is you got a month for the maple syrup, and you got a month for the strawberries, a month for the green corn, and so on. Other people keep track of the ceremonies that go on in the year. Communities living by the lake, they might keep track of when the, the fish come in. They might keep track of little fish like the, the smelt. Whereas someone inland, no point in keeping track of the smelt. Um, it's not a significant event in the year. So first there's the month of wind, in which there is nothing but wind. Not even much snow, just wind to blow away the previous year. Then there's the maple syrup month, when the melt begins and the freeze-thaw cycles make the sap run. Then there's the budding month, when the plants start to come back to life. Followed by the planting month, when you get the corn in the ground. Then the strawberry month, when the strawberries are ripe and you try and pick as many as possible. Followed by the raspberry month, and then the mulberry month. Then comes the green corn month, when the unripe corn is sweet and can be eaten right off the cob, followed by the beginning of fall. Then the harvest month, when it's time to bring in a great many things. Then the frost month, where you bring in the last of the harvest and then go for the trout run. Then the snow month, for when the snow stays on the ground and doesn't melt, which is followed at last by midwinter, after which the cycle repeats. Now, there's a misconception surrounding these. If you do any preliminary research, you're going to find some articles talking about how the outer ring of scales was used to keep track of the days. Um, this is such a bizarre misconception because there aren't 28 scales along the outer rim. Yet, some of these articles, they go so far as to say that every turtle has 28 scales. No, they don't. Most turtles have got either 23, 25, or 26. This one's got 25. I don't know of any that have 28, particularly not local species. Right. It's such a... It's a mistake that not even a child would make. It's, it's bizarre. Right. You give a child a turtle shell, and you tell him that there's 28 scales in the outer ring, he's going to count them. And kids like to count things. He's going to come up, hey, what are you trying to pull here? Right. Now, well, some of these websites, you're going to see people saying that every turtle has got 28 shells, and they might have a picture up beside it of a turtle shell that is to the contrary. It's just such a bizarre misconception. I have no idea how it could have come to be. 
The only turtles that have 28 scales along the outer rim, as far as I'm aware, are turtles with a growth defect. This is the equivalent of saying that all humans have 11 fingers. You hear about it happening, but I've never met anybody with 11 fingers. So, no doubt some people did find one of those turtles that had the 28 scales. And I'm not ruling out the possibility that they might have used that particular turtle shell to record the number of days, but it was not normal practice. Normal turtles aren't like that. Only defective freak turtles are like that. So, setting aside the calendar, I want to talk about how time was reckoned. So most of the time you'd reckon time based on things that had happened recently. It's the same thing we do these days. Right? You, you talk to your parents and, oh, that was about two or three years after we'd been married. Right? People I hear talk about, oh, it was a couple of years after that big snowstorm, right? that big ice storm back in uh, 97. They reckon things based on the big important life-changing events that, that occurred at the time. We still do this same sort of thing. People did it back then. As far as I know, there wasn't some specific system for dating things. People would just go by, it was my grandfather's time, my great-grandfather's time, my great-great-great-grandfather's time, so on and so forth. Or it was the Peacemaker's Day. Um, I want to propose a, a, a new system. Right? You got all of these, these people, the controversy, the argument around BC or BCE. Okay? Um, my opinion on that is that one of them is greedy and the other one's kind of stupid. Right? <sighs> right? BC is a, I don't know, even Eurocentrist is the wrong word, like Christian centrist. Right? I'm not a Christian. A lot of people in the world aren't Christians. So why should we be using this Christian system? But the BCE system is just stupid because what they're saying is that, well, Christ is not important. We don't want him in our, our system here. But the only thing significant about the year one when BCE starts is that that is the year that Jesus Christ was born according to a miscalculation a couple hundred years later. That's the only thing significant about that year. So the, the BCE people yeah, Christ isn't important. Uh, we're, we're secularists, but um, the common era started with Jesus' birth. It's just hypocritical and dumb. Even if you set aside the question of divinity, it's absurd to argue that his life was unimportant. For better or worse, it's difficult to imagine a more significant event in the development of history. <sighs> so here's my proposed new system. Rather than starting with the, the birth of Jesus, let's start with another messianic figure. Here's my system. It's BP and AC. Okay? So we are currently in the year um, 880 AC. So that's after Confederation. Right? Whereas Jesus was supposedly born in the year 1142 BP, before Peacemaker. That's my Iroquoian centrist dating system. I hope you found this interesting. Um, thank you for watching. And Happy New Year.